Hi, Mike Aben here with a KSP tutorial. In the last episode, we built Rescue One, specifically designed to rescue Bill Kerman, who has somehow gotten himself stuck in a 150 kilometer orbit about Kerman. Today, we're going to perform the mission. This episode will be all about rendezvousing with another object in space. In order to rendezvous with another object, whether that be a ship, asteroid, moon, or planet, you need to accomplish two things. One, you need to get yourself into the same orbit as your target, and two, you need to time your insertion into that orbit such that when you arrive, you'll be very close to your target. The easiest way to accomplish this is to first insert yourself into a different orbit than your target, then perform a Hohmann transfer to your target's orbit, timing the burn such that you will be close to your target at the time that you are ready to perform the insertion burn to match orbits. As we are currently below Bill's 150 km altitude, I'm going to initially insert Jeb and Val into an orbit that is below Bill's orbit. Specifically, we're going for a standard 80 km orbit. Recall that once in orbit, the lower your altitude, the higher your velocity. So our velocity will be higher than Bill's. I'm going to time the launch so that Bill will be ahead of us. As we will be the faster vessel, we will catch up to him. If Bill is in an equatorial orbit, the exact timing isn't particularly crucial. There, that ought to do it. Val and Jeb do seem eager to get going, so let's punch it. I talked about getting into orbit in episode 2, and last episode I showed how to use the rocket equation to know you will have the necessary fuel to get the job done. In this episode, we'll just concentrate on the rendezvous. I made the decision to put myself into an orbit that is a lower altitude than the targets, but I could have gone with inserting into a higher orbit. However, with the higher orbit, I would have been traveling slower than my target. In this case, I would have wanted to insert the vessel so that it was ahead of the target, allowing the faster target to catch up to me. Now, going into a higher orbit just to transfer it down to a lower orbit will cost more fuel, but you could have a situation where that's the only way you have to do it. For example, your target could already be in a very low orbit, and there may not be much room between the target's orbit and the atmosphere. Well, that's main engine cutoff, so we'll set up the orbital insertion burn. I'm only going to push my periapsis up to about 50 kilometers or so. There we go, 45 kilometers, that'll do it. And let's just move the node so that it is right on apoapsis. Okay, there we go. We've got a 44 second burn and a little over a minute, so we'd best get ourselves ready. I'll start the burn at about 25 seconds, a few seconds before the halfway point, as I will be reducing throttle at the end. The idea with keeping periapsis in the atmosphere is so that the debris will not remain in orbit, cluttering up our skies. A 50 kilometer periapsis works well for another reason, as it's too high in the atmosphere for the game to automatically remove the object, and it will remain in orbit until you make it the active vehicle. This gives you some control as to where it comes down, which can help minimize the recovery cost in career mode. That's provided, of course, that you put some parachutes on the thing, which I didn't do here. Okay. Let's check this out. 47 kilometers, good enough. So we'll ditch the booster and complete our insertion just with the orbiter. I won't use a maneuver node for this part and just burn when I'm close to apoapsis until my periapsis is about 80 kilometers. Of course, you need to give your orbiter a bit of extra fuel for this, but this orbiter has more than enough fuel for the mission. There we go. Now it's time to set up our Hohmann transfer. To do this, I set up a maneuver node and start adding on some prograde to push up my altitude towards Bill's. Oh, wait a second. I forgot to add Bill as a target. There we go. Okay, so we'll continue to push up prograde, raising our apoapsis until, there they are, we get these closest approach indicators. This is the position of the target at closest approach. And this over here would be my position. So as you can see, they're still quite a ways apart. So what we're gonna do is we're going to grab the maneuver node and we're gonna start moving it forward in our orbit. And notice that the closest approach indicators are starting to come closer together. Thing is we get to a point where I catch up to my current position and then they jump just like that. We'll deal with this by just popping ahead in orbit using these buttons here. 
There we go. Um, okay, I want to time warp a bit because my ship is right underneath the maneuver node. Get that out of the way. All right, good. And then we'll back out of here and start uh, seeing the two. Now that's still 12.9 kilometers. Uh, yeah, we still got some fine tuning to go. So I'm going to give it some more prograde. But before I do that, I like to be focused on the planet so everything's symmetrical. I find that easier to do. Okay, so let's give ourselves a bit more prograde. And I'm using the mouse wheel for this, so it's a nice fine tuning. And I'll keep doing this until I get, they should be popping up soon. There they are, a second set of close approach indicators. The second set tells me that I'm crossing Bill's orbit in two locations. Burning much beyond this is inefficient, as you'll be using fuel to raise above Bill's orbit only to come back down again. I played with this for a while to get my closest approach as low as I could, but I can only get it down to 4.4 kilometers. I'll time warp around until we're closer to the burn, and here you can see that my predicted trajectory is coming to the south, which is below on the screen, of Bill's orbit. This is because the planes of the two orbits aren't quite the same. The two planes are at an angle to each other, and we call this angle the inclination. There are will always be two points on opposite sides of the orbit where the planes of the orbits cross. These points are called the ascending and descending node. Coming up ahead of us, we have the descending node, and hovering over it tells us that our relative inclination is negative 0.4 degrees. Okay, let's time warp to the node and fix this. That the inclination is negative, and that it's a descending node tells me that I need to burn in a positive normal direction. The normal vector, which are the uh, purple sort of triangly things on the nav ball, are perpendicular to the plane of the orbit, and with a prograde equatorial orbit, that direction will be very close to north. So I've got it now on the positive normal vector, and we're getting pretty close, so let's start burning. No maneuver node this time. We're just going to watch our uh, separation at closest approach and keep burning gently until it's down to a number that we can live with. Oh, there we go. I know it's glitching in and out there and popping back and forth, but it's 0.7 kilometers, which is great. All right, the next bit, let's get this out of the way. The next bit of this is going to be to time warp until I'm just a couple of minutes from our closest approach. And again, uh, just I'll watch my distance there. But the thing to really watch is this. And I'm looking at the time. And when it's around two minutes to our closest approach, there we go. We're going to bring back up the nav ball stop, the time warp. We're going to put it on target mode by clicking on the speed indicator. And then we're going to look around for our retrograde vector. There we go. I still had it on the normal vector. There's our retrograde vector. Right next to the retrograde vector, you will see the purple retrograde target icon telling us the direction to the target. And since I've switched the nav ball to target mode, I now have my relative velocity with Bill rather than my orbital velocity. By the time I get to the target, I need to accomplish two things. One, I need this velocity to be much, much lower. And two, I need to have the retrograde icon right on top of the target icon. The burning I'm doing now is accomplishing a bit of both, reducing my relative velocity, but also moving the retrograde icon towards the target. As you burn, you push the retrograde icon away from the ship icon on the nav ball. So just think about pushing or herding that retrograde icon where you need it to go. You can see I'm also keeping an eye on my closest approach distance. I want to keep making this smaller. Another thing to keep in mind is that I am not approaching Bill in a straight line. This means that the target and retrograde icons will drift relative to each other as we move along our curved paths. In fact, the retrograde icon tends to move towards the horizon on the nav ball, so keep this in mind. I ended up getting my closest approach distance down to 0.0 kilometers, with the encounter speed a little over 40 meters per second, so I'm leaving map view, and we'll do the rest here from the exterior view. The rest of this is just riding it in burning occasionally to reduce your velocity further, or to push the retrograde icon back onto the target icon. My only advice at this point is to take your time and don't come in too fast. 
You can easily find yourself on top of your target very quickly and not be able to reduce your velocity quick enough. This can be frustrating as you blow by your target and potentially disastrous if you happen to have a collision. It's better to come in slowly and use time warp when you need to speed things up. As I finish this off, I'll also add that I'm going to be putting this tutorial series on hold for a while. I enjoy making these, but it's clear that people enjoy my Let's Play series more than these tutorials. In fact, it was all the scattered stuff that I talked about in my Let's Plays that really motivated this series. I thought it would be nice to get these ideas into a more organized format. With just what's in these tutorials, you can accomplish a lot in KSP. Want to go to the moon or another planet? Well, you'll be doing a timed home and transfer to get there. The only real difference is scale. That said, there are clearly many other topics I could do. I'll likely pick up on this series again in the future, so if there's something you would really like me to cover, let me know in the comments. Okay, we are closing in now. Let's reduce our speed a little bit more. Okay, there we are. That's 1.3 meters per second. Relative velocity, a little over 50 meters to go. We'll just ride this in. Like I said, it's much, much better to come in slowly and cautiously as opposed to coming in hot. All right, there's half a meter per second. Still pretty blazing fast when compared to the real world, which I will talk about in the last section of this particular tutorial. We are now under 30 meters distance. Oh, you know, we are definitely within an, an, uh, the range of uh, Bill being able to EVA along, so there really isn't any practical reason to get this any lower. Let's get under 20 meters. There we go. Let's put on the brakes here. Get our relative velocity down to zero. And then I like to turn the vessel so that it's oriented north-south. That way it's up on the screen. I don't know. I find that easier when getting curveballs in and out. Of course, the rest of this is easy. Once we get Bill aboard, we'll time warp until we are on the opposite side of Kerbin from the KSC. Burn retrograde to put our periapsis into the atmosphere ditch the service module, and then ride the capsule down to the surface. After earlier failed attempts by both the Russians and the Americans, the first successful rendezvous was accomplished by U.S. astronaut Wally Shira on December 15, 1965, when he maneuvered Gemini 6 within a foot of its sister spacecraft, Gemini 7. Being able to rendezvous two spacecrafts was a vital component of the later Apollo program. Of course, the International Space Station regularly receives a wide variety of vessels, from the uncrewed NASA Cygnus and SpaceX's Dragon, to the Roscosmos Progress and its crewed Soyuz spacecraft, in addition to uncrewed vessels from the European Space Agency and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. However, they don't get there quite as quickly as we typically do in Kerbal Space Program. With the rendezvous in this video, I had an encounter speed of just under 70 meters per second. That's about 250 kilometers per hour, or 150 miles per hour. And I didn't start slowing down until I was two minutes from the target. In the real world, folks are a lot more cautious. The idea is still the same, though. The spacecraft is inserted into an orbit lower than the ISS, and allow itself to catch up, but rather than perform a single home and transfer, the vessel will perform a few of them, slowly raising the altitude in stages. This results in it usually taking a couple of days to get there, but with a final encounter speed at a much more sedate one or two meters per second. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and that I will see you again next time.